Hola chicos! Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Should probably put the toilet seat down. Hello guys! Welcome back. Today we're in my bathroom. Today I'm gonna do a little cleanse. I've just got home from work, as you can see, hence the ratty hair, hence the top, hence the makeup. Like I said in every video, I've got the same makeup on because I always film after work. But today we're going to take off and we're going to have a good cleanse of the face. And I thought I'm going to show you some of my favourite products at the minute. If you guys watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I have eczema. I've suffered from eczema since I came out of my mother's womb. And I was born with it. It's something I've dealt with forever, for my whole 24 years of existence. And if you're new to my channel and you don't know that, hi, hello, welcome to the Hope Diaries. Please stay, please hit that subscribe button. If you have eczema, then you'll know it's quite a struggle to get shop bought products that are good for us. You know, we tend to just stick to what the doctors give us. But I've found a couple of products that have actually been working all right with my skin so far. Now, we're all different. If you suffer from eczema, something that I use may affect you. Like, for example, if you say I have eczema, almost 90% of the world's population will say E45. But for me, E45 is shocking. And I'm sure for a lot of eczema sufferers as well, E45 is like water to my skin. In fact, it probably makes it worse. If you've got eczema, you know, we have to chop and change and try different things. Sometimes it's not even the cream that helps, it's just what's happening in the environment around you. It's what you eat, it's all different things. It's all different factors to it, but there's a couple of things that are working okay for me at the minute, and it's quite nice to have that luxury of being able to use a shop-bought product. Because of course, when I'm at work in the changing room with all the girls, they're all doing their skincare and they're all putting lovely smelly moisturiser on after their showers and I'm absolutely rubbing steroid cream into my elbows. So it's nice to go to a shop and buy something nice, you know, that wasn't prescribed to you. <laughs> I've put the exposure up on this camera and I literally look like a ghost. Like if I wasn't white and ginger enough, I am even more now. We're just going to get unready today. We're just having a little cleanse and while we do that I thought we'd have a chat about Dubai. Now I know I've spoken about it before. I did a little video on Ramadan talking about the do's and don'ts and what you can and can't do in Dubai in that time and I think I briefly mentioned a couple of bits in my comeback video, my q and I've got a couple of questions that I got from Instagram. I've got some do's and don'ts. I've got a couple of fun facts. So I thought while I take my makeup off, let's just have a chat because Dubai is a very interesting place and it's a lovely place. I do love it because there is a big cultural difference for a lot of us between our countries and Dubai or our countries in the UAE. So let's, let's chat about it. First of all, I'm gonna take these lashes off. These have been on since 11 a.m. Okay, you're all gonna shout at me, but I'm gonna use a face wipe. Sorry, people say face wipes are bad, but this has been on all day and I just wanna scratch it off. So we're gonna use a face wipe. So the first thing that I'm actually gonna mention is something Wow, pretty. Oh, by the way, if you don't watch my channel, you're about to find out that I don't have any eyebrows. I know I have no eyebrows. I'm fully aware of the fact that I have no eyebrows, but look how well I draw them on every day. Look at the difference in that. See, I'm still the same person. I just don't have any eyebrows. So before I take my makeup off and you go, that girl looks so weird. I know. I know. Another thing I've lived with all my life. I've got no eyebrows. But it has benefited me in a way because I am an excellent eyebrow drawer on her. So the first thing I'm going to say, and a lot of people have asked me about this, is about alcohol. And the answer to that question is yes, there is alcohol in Dubai and quite a lot of it. <laughs> yes, you can drink alcohol in Dubai. If anyone's ever told you that you can't drink or you can't get lit, <laughs> you can. We can have a drink. There's nightclubs here, there's bars here. However, it is not as easy as nipping to the shop and picking up a bottle of wine. You cannot buy alcohol here unless you have a license. However, if you're staying in a hotel, alcohol is served. It's very rare that you'll find alcohol in a restaurant if you go out to eat and if there's any sort of terrace or balcony out the front, they won't serve alcohol in general because that's like drinking in public. You can drink in the beach clubs, but of course the beach clubs are sectioned off. Yes, there is alcohol, but you can only enjoy an alcoholic beverage inside a hotel or a bar that's inside a hotel. There's a number of bars that are located inside the bottom floor. Actually, almost every nightclub that I've been to so far in Dubai 
have been inside of a hotel. Now, of course, if the police were to come to your house and you had a bottle of wine sitting out and you didn't have a license, then you're in trouble. So you've just got to be careful with it. Also, nightclubs, there's lots of alcohol. Here in Dubai, Tuesday tends to be a ladies' night where they offer free drinks to ladies. You can think what you like about that, but that's the thing here. Ladies' nights are a big thing. Then, of course, people get tipsy, people get drunk, but the most important thing is that you are not rowdy. You are not shouting and screaming and getting everyone's attention, and then you get outside and you're calling for your taxi like, take me home. That's what you've got to be careful of, but absolutely you can enjoy a glass of wine here. Of course, if you're over at the age of 21. Okay, so I've just scrubbed my face to death. Now I'm going to use, now I'm not going to take credit for this, I get this given to me at work. I get all my makeup supplied for me at my job and I get all my skincare as well, all my cleansers and things like that. So this is the Bioderma Micellar Solution, Micellar Water, and it is fabulous. This one's for dehydrated sensitive skin. So it's just a cleanser, so I'm gonna get my little cotton pads that they also give me at work. How good's that? They give me cotton pads and cotton buds. Also, there's a couple of girls at work that call cotton buds. Wait till I find one, one of these. Call these things a Q-tip. Is that an American name? I've never heard of Q-tip before. Or is that like a brand or something? I don't know. Anyway, next point. Second thing I wanna talk about. Dress modestly. Dubai is a bit freer than what people make it out to be. You have to dress modestly. You have to respect the religion of the city. You have to respect your local people, of course. What I would say is, ladies, cover your shoulders and cover your knees as much as possible. If you're out at night time, going to a nightclub, going to a nice restaurant, you can wear a nice dress. My only advice would be is to take a little something for your shoulders to cover it up. It just really depends on who you're with, what kind of people you're around. But of course, you wouldn't go to Dubai Mall in your best mini skirt and you boob tube. Girls, if you're coming on a holiday here, leave your crop tops at home, leave your bralettes at home. It's not appropriate. No one will really say anything bad to you, but you will get some stares and that can make you uncomfortable. People will look. If you enter any government building, you will have to be covered as much as possible, males and females, in any government building, anything like that, in any mosque. The boys also must not wear shorts, basically. But other than that, it is a bit free. People say you've got to cover head to toe. It's not like that. You can and that's a bit freer, you know. I can go to the gym in this, for example. I'm not offending anyone, but just when you're out there, the malls, I would say, is the most important thing. And you don't even want to be walking around in your crop top. You just got to respect that. I don't find it a struggle at all. It's quite easy to bring a little denim jacket with you to cover your shoulders. Of course, tourists come to Dubai all the time and some people don't read up on that before they go. It's not so bad for tourists, but if you're living here like I am, you have to respect the Islamic culture. It's a thing you do. Especially as I'm working here, I don't want to upset anyone. Which brings me on to the next point. Public display of affection. Don't do it. Don't hold your boyfriend's hand. Be very careful. That's all I'm going to say. Don't be snogging your boyfriend in front of the Burj Khalifa for a nice photo like you're at the Eiffel Tower in Paris. <laughs> Just don't do it. Just be on the safe side. You know, don't be snogging your man as if you're waiting for the bus in the UK. When you're in your hotel room, do whatever you like. But when you're outside, when you're at the mall, just respect everyone around. To be honest, I don't even want to see you snogging your boyfriend. So <laughs> yeah, just no touching, no feeling. That's the way it is and you've got to respect that. So next I'm gonna use this Sukin. This is actually an Australian company and one of the girls at work introduced me to this and it's vegan. So this is a little scrub. I've just become aware of how horrendous I look. <gasps> I still have black in my waterline. Of course, hand gestures as well. Just be careful what you're doing with your hands. Of course, no swearing, but anything, I mean, I'm quite a talkative person and I do this quite a lot. That can come across as, as aggressive. And you don't know what something means in another language. So just be careful because, you know, this for us is okay. That could mean something completely different for someone else. So just be careful with your hand gestures. My next point, I've touched on it before. Don't take pickies. Sorry, I was on about the scrub, I forgot. So this is a face scrub. I'm just gonna rub a little bit of this into my nose. Now this is not fragranced um, at all, so this is why it's not affecting my eczema. No sulfates as well, that's important for eczema. Just be careful with your sulfates, especially in your shampoo. Anyone with eczema, if the sulfates in your shampoo, it really affects the eczema on my scalp. Oh yeah, that's lovely. 
So yeah, be careful when you're taking pictures. Instagram, Snapchat, you know, they're all about it here as well. They love the Snapchat here, but be careful. If you take a picture of a public place, anyone who does not want to be in your photo has every right to come up and say, excuse me, I think I'm in your photo, can you delete it? And you must delete it. It has happened to me before. A local person from Dubai has asked me to delete my photo because they happened to be walking past when I took an Instagram video. Just be careful. I know you want to show off your holidays. I know you want to show off Dubai. And I'm sure people love the fact that you're showing off Dubai, but just don't get other people in your photos because they don't want to be in them. And the last one, I'm just going to touch on again if you're going to watch this before my Ramadan video. If you are coming to Dubai during Ramadan, please remember, do not eat and drink in the street. We have talked about it before on my channel, but you can be fined for eating and drinking in the street or in public. All restaurants will be closed during that time. If not, they'll be blacked out. They tend to put boards up or black curtains and you know the restaurants and the coffee shops are still open but you must enter through through a separation wall or through a curtain or something like that. So yeah, just a reminder, be careful with chewing gum as well and you can get fined for drinking water in a taxi for example if the driver's not happy about it. So I'm quickly going to jump in the shower now. I've removed all my makeup, I've given my pores a good scrub. When I get into the shower I'm going to use this one, Himalaya. This is a great one. I'm not going to take credit again. I get given this at work. It doesn't affect my eczema at all. Neem and turmeric. 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 However you like to pronounce it. I say turmeric. Is that a Scottish thing? Who knows? This has been excellent for my skin. When I, when I say excellent, I just mean that it does not make me flare up. <laughs> There's not many things that are excellent for eczema prone skin. I've been using it for a good couple of months now and I really do feel like it cleans my face. So I'm going to jump in the shower, not going to record that bit, and I'm going to wash my face with this in the shower. Then when I come back it's time for some fun facts about Dubai, things that I find amazing. Hello, nice and fresh. So I just washed my face with this and it feels really soft. Do you know what's weird? It's from normal to oily skin and obviously I don't have oily skin because I've got eczema, I've got dry skin. Speaking of which, if you have eczema you'll know you actually sh don't really get spots. One, two, three. You know I use the, a tea tree which is also meant to be good for acne and spots. Face mask and it absolutely brought me out in spots which is the weirdest thing. Tea tree and witch hazel with active charcoal. I don't know. It was a charcoal mask, like a black one and I woke up with three spots. Hmm. I don't get breakouts because obviously I have eczema. And we don't tend to really get spots because our skin is so dry. Spots obviously come from oily blocked up skin so who knows? So after I come out of my shower I'm just going to moisturise my nose and under eye with aloe vera. Some eczema sufferers don't like aloe vera. I do. I, I like it under my eyes because it's nice and refreshing. I got this one in a shop called Miniso. I love this. It's just like a gel. It's actually aloe vera moisturising essence. It comes out like a clear gel and I just like to rub it underneath my eyes. It makes me feel refreshed. So let's come on to some fun facts about Dubai. Number one, the police cars are absolute Lamborghinis. I was getting a lift with my friend the other day and two police cars drove past us. Two Lamborghinis. I mean, that is a stylish policeman. Next one is chewing gum is not allowed in the metro. The toilet seat up, how embarrassing again. If you're in the metro station, if you're on the metro, you can get fined for having chewing gum. Next I'm going to use is a Another Sukin. Sukin. This is a hydrating mist toner. Now I just like to spray this all over and pat it in. This combines rose water and chamomile to hydrate and tone the skin. Oh, lovely. And then I just like to pat it in. It's alcohol free. Again, it's vegan. Flower extract. Can be used on body, face, under, over lotions, creams, oils, gels, makeup. Another fun fact is that you can be fined 1,000 dirham for having your laundry drying on the balcony. And it's true, when you drive around Dubai you will not see one single clothes horse or drying rack sitting on the balconies. It's, yeah, you can get fined. I believe, I don't know how true this is, but someone once told me that it makes Dubai look ugly. It doesn't make it look professional and nice and neat. So yeah, 
Another fun fact. Of course, probably the best fact about Dubai. It's got the tallest building in the world and it's got the largest shopping mall in the world. You probably knew that already, but it's a fun fact. Another thing, FaceTime, FaceTime calls, WhatsApp calls, WhatsApp video calls, Facebook video calls are all banned in Dubai. So if you're my friend and you're watching this and you think Hope is a terrible friend, she's been out in Dubai for eight months and she has not FaceTimed me once, that is why it is banned here. Skype, I believe works and it's worked for me a couple of times but other times it hasn't worked so I'm not 100% sure. This is for security reasons. They're very tight about phones here. As soon as I got here I had to get a UAE number, I had to get a UAE SIM card. I believe they track phones searching of course for any trouble. So yeah, video calls are banned and when you buy a new iPhone or a new Apple product here, FaceTime does not exist, the FaceTime app does not exist if you buy an iPhone out here. I got a couple of things on Instagram as well. I put a little ask me a question on my Instagram. Let me see what's have I not answered already. Is it hard to find a job and accommodation without a visa before moving there? Oh, that's a hard one. In terms of accommodation, the one good thing about Dubai is that every job out here tend to give you, tend to, I'm gonna say they tend to, not every job, because I don't know about every job, but normally they do supply accommodation, transport, and food, like my job. My job no longer gives me accommodation, but they give me an extra bit on top of my salary to find accommodation. In terms of finding a job without a visa, of course, if a job brings you to Dubai, they will organize your visa for you, like they did with me. You know, I just got a job offer, took it, and then when I arrived in Dubai, the company organized my Emirates ID, things like that. However, there's lots of people that pay for their own visa and they find work and they stay here. It's a hard question for me to answer. I don't know that. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, don't take my word for it. If you want to work out in Dubai and you want to, to start a career out here, definitely start sending your emails, get in contact with people and have a chit chat with a couple of different companies, send your CV. And if you get a job out here, they will organize everything for you. But what I will say is once you've got the job, normally every company here are pretty helpful with finding some accommodation. Transport's a big thing, like the motorways are just full of buses, a bus load of people. Like me, I go on a bus every morning to work. And as I said, food as well. I get to eat three meals a day at my job, which is lovely and it's a great benefit to the job. I'm really not sure, I'm not the person to ask. I will have research on that and I'll get back to you. Is it hot? I'm not sure if this person's taking the mick out of me. Um, yes, it's very hot in Dubai, we're in the desert. If this is a real question, I feel like you're probably laughing at me if I've actually answered your question. But it is getting colder and the change in the weather switched so quickly. Only this beginning of this week, I think Monday, I was like, oh, I need a jacket. There is a breeze at night time now. It is cold, you need a little jacket to put over your shoulders, it's lovely. I mean, I arrived in May and the heat was unbearable. Like you have to go in cars ever. You can't walk outside. Oh no, you cannot walk outside. It's far too hot. And I am a sweater, as you would have seen in my last video at the gym. I drip. It is so hot. Like I can't even describe the heat. The best way I could describe it is if you've been to Spain, you go to the beach, you lie down and get your sun cream on and it's that pure sun and you're absolutely roasting lying there on the beach with your pina colada. Lovely. Here, it's not like pure sunlight. There's like a mask of what I presume is dust and sand because we're in the desert. So when you look up, it's not a clear blue sky. There's like a little layer over, but that makes the humidity so much worse. Like the heat bounces off of my skin when I go outside in the summer. What I will say as well is the sun sets so early here that in the height of summer, like in July, the sun was setting at literally 7 p.m. And I was like, what? Like in Spain, when I lived in Spain, I had my dinner outside at 10 p.m. in the sunlight and now, that it's winter. The clocks don't go back here or forward, that's another thing I wanted to mention. The clocks don't change ever. And now it's pitch black at 5.30 p.m. Darkness, complete darkness. So yes, it is hot in Dubai, it's still hot, but it, there is a breeze now, it's a bit more wind and it's lovely. So last but not least, I'm going to moisturize. Now, this is a recent discovery for me. I believe it's just came into the scene now, the eczema scene now, but Child's Farm. 
wow. It is a moisturizer for babies. Honestly, absolute godsend. It's suitable for sensitive skin, also safe for people who may be prone to eczema. I cannot recommend this enough. If there's anything I could recommend that shop bought, it would be this one or Aveeno. I don't have Aveeno here. I've left it at work. But these are my two shop bought products that I am able to use without a worry. So the last thing I'm going to do is moisturize actually almost my whole body with this. I've got really bad eczema just now in my elbows. You would have actually seen it in my last video in the gym. <gasps> my eczema was so bad, you could see it from the camera. So I'm going to moisturise all my dry, actually my whole body with this. I'm not going to put any steroid creams on today. I've got some steroid creams from the doctor, but I'm giving myself a break because it's not good to use steroid creams all the time. So the last things I just want to say about Dubai, because it is a lovely place to live. Of course, everywhere has their ups and downs, but I just think Dubai has really opened my eyes to a lot of things. The majority of people here are only here to work. Of course, there's locals, there's local people from Dubai, but majority of people who are here are here for work and work only. Everyone is lovely. I'm yet to meet a horrible person. Anyone will do anything for you. You know, like just like favours or taxi drivers will drop you off exactly where you need to go. People in restaurants are so friendly and lovely. Another thing that I love is very eco-friendly place. For example, the hotel that I'm in just now is an eco-friendly hotel. If I open the window, the aircon automatically shuts off. Um, it says on my little plaque, help us save the planet one towel at a time. Please hang your towel to use it again. Leave it on the floor if you would like us to replace it. Lots of people are starting with the paper straws and things like that. And the last thing I want to say to wrap this video up is Dubai is the safest place in the world and I do believe it is actually officially the safest city in the world. You could leave your mobile phone on the top of your car which I know a lot of you have probably done before and it will be there the next morning when you go to collect it. There is zero theft here. So it's an extremely safe place. I do not feel unsafe walking alone at night time. There is a very, very extremely low crime rate here. In other words, Dubai is a lovely place. I hope I've taught you a little bit more today if you're coming in here on holiday or if you've just got a job out here. I hope you've enjoyed a bit of skincare from me as well. Oh, I forgot to put my lip balm on. So my camera is about to die, so I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna have a cup of tea and a snack because I'm starving. It's actually really late though. I'm sorry to scare you with the no eyebrows thing, but... You know, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye!